Kingdom Hearts 3 has finally completed its developmental stage, and after 16 years of waiting in the Realm of Darkness, we are finally getting the final piece of the trilogy. Hi, I'm Sydney with The Leaderboard, and we are going to do our dang best to unpack the convoluted lore of Kingdom Hearts. The Kingdom Hearts universe is divided into four realms. The Realm of Light, the Realm of Darkness, the Realm Between, and the Realm of Sleep, which lies parallel to them all. The Realm of Light holds all the Disney worlds, as well as Destiny Islands and Radiant Gardens. The Realm of Darkness is where all the Heartless live and where Kingdom Hearts resides. The Realm Between consists of worlds that border the light and dark realms, such as Traverse Town, Castle Oblivion, and so on. And lastly, the Realm of Sleep consists of sleeping worlds. When Sora seals up the door to darkness on a world, he saves them from further attack from the Heartless and nobodies invading from the Realm of Darkness. However, during a world's recovery, they sometimes go to sleep and are unable to return to the Realm of Light. These are called sleeping worlds, and they reside, as you would expect, in the Realm of Sleep. In order to wake them, you need to unlock a keyhole. So, what exactly is Kingdom Hearts? Isn't that what everybody's asking? Does anybody know? Well, other than the title of the franchise, Kingdom Hearts is the heart of all worlds. In the game, it's typically pictured as a giant blue heart floating in the sky, like a moon. Think of Kingdom Hearts as a kind of heaven for hearts. When a person dies, or even when a world dies, their hearts go to Kingdom Hearts. It's the source of ultimate power and knowledge. Like the sun, it gives light to the world, binding it together in peace, harmony, and all that other good stuff. Unlike the shattered fragments of different worlds that we see in Kingdom Hearts today, the worlds used to be just one world, bound together by Kingdom Hearts light. We've actually seen two different versions of Kingdom Hearts appear in the game so far. One of them is the original Big Blue Heart that contains the heart of all worlds, which we see in Birth by Sleep. And the second is the yellow artificial Kingdom Hearts that we see in Kingdom Hearts 2 that's made out of the hearts of men. Well, now that we got Kingdom Hearts out of the way, let's talk about its iconic weapon, the Keyblade. Did you know that during the design phase of the Keyblade, Tatsuya Nomura originally wanted it to look like a chainsaw? Can you imagine Sora sawing down the door to darkness? Thank goodness it came out looking like this, much more elegant. What we know as Keyblades are actually all imitations of the Keyblade, which coexists alongside Kingdom Hearts as its protector. Wait, what? How are Keyblades imitations of Keyblades? Well, the original Keyblade is spelled X-Blade with the Greek letter Key, which is actually Kai. So, Kingdom Hearts, you rascal. Some fans call it the Kai Blade or even the X-Blade for clarity, but we'll be sticking with the official in-game pronunciation, Keyblade. Enter the Master of Masters, the first Keyblade Master who was able to study the Keyblade and construct the Keyblade in its image. Isn't that a great name for a master? The Master of Masters? Truly just like the Bodie McBoatface of his time. The first Keyblades were created by the Master of Masters, who forged them from the hearts of his apprentices. Not literally, of course. This is still just a Disney game. I know the Keyblade Wars makes it look like they were just handing out Keyblades like candy back then, but in the present, we're only aware of a few Keyblades in existence. So what do Keyblades actually do? Well, they do a really good job of hitting and cutting things, but the actual key part of Keyblade comes from being able to open any door or lock. As we mentioned, the most famous example is unlocking keyholes to worlds, but it also applies to people's hearts. Just give your friend a good smack on the chest with your Keyblade and their heart will be all better. Please don't try that at home. Don't just throw keys at people. Not a good idea. Each Keyblade is partially styled and customized to their wielder. The Kingdom Key for the Realm of Light is wielded by Sora. Its counterpart, the Kingdom Key D from the Realm of Darkness, is wielded by King Mickey. Riku originally uses the Keyblade Soul Eater, which is a Keyblade that grows more powerful when used with darkness. But after learning to use both the powers of light and the dark, his Keyblade morphs into its present day form, Way to the Dawn. And then there are the Keyblades Aqua, Kairi, Lee, Ventus, and Terra use. Just as the wand chooses the wizard, the Keyblade chooses its wielder. Even if, let's say, Captain Jack Sparrow was to take your Keyblade, it would disappear from their hand. Other Keyblade Masters, however, are able to choose a person to inherit their powers with a bequeathing ceremony. If the Keyblade accepts the bequeathing ceremony, then that person will be able to summon their own Keyblade. A Keyblade can also be inherited when a person with a strong heart makes contact with it. Xehanort, the main antagonist of the Kingdom Hearts series, carries the Keyblade with no name, which we'll explain more in a bit, but it's very powerful, and explains Xehanort's bonkers ability to travel through time.
time. Xehanort's aim is to recreate the Keyblade to have Kingdom Hearts for himself. When there's a source of great power just floating in the sky, there are those that'll make a grab for it. The Master of Masters, armed with the future-telling Gazing Eye, predicted the upcoming Keyblade War for control of Kingdom Hearts. The war would cause the light to expire and end the world, all of them. Yes, anything that the eye sees in the future is then seen by the master in the present, or the past, whatever. It's Kingdom Hearts, just accept it. Anyway, he chronicled all that he saw with the gazing eye, including the Keyblade War, in a book of prophecies. And then, knowing all he knows, the Master of Masters decides to gift a copy to five of his six apprentices, and then, subsequently, disappear. Yes, what is a master without an apprentice? Famous last words from Emperor Palpatine. With this being the Master of Masters, he, of course, needs six of them. He gifts five of his apprentices Keyblades, forged from the power of their hearts. He also gives them the knowledge of their ultimate demise, and a specific role to play in preparation for it. That's nice. These five would become the Foretellers, each with their own union of Keyblade wielders set on preventing the destruction of the world. These Foretellers are Ira, Asad, Envy, Gula, and Ava. But what about the last apprentice, Lushu? Well, the master gives him the second-hand Keyblade, no name, with his gazing eye attached, a black box he is never allowed to open, and instructions to be a wandering hermit. Gee, I wonder who got the short end of the stick here. Lushu is also instructed by the master to observe events as they unfold and to pass down the nameless Keyblade from master to apprentice so that he may continue to invade others' privacy. I mean, relay future events back to him. After the disappearance of the Master of Masters, the Foretellers continue to lead their unions in the battle against the Darkness. At the same time, they're trying to fulfill their roles given to them by the Master. Ira was chosen to succeed the Master as the leader of the Foretellers, with Asad as his right hand. Envy was selected to be an observer and mediator between her fellow Foretellers. Gula, however, was gifted with a lost page from the Book of Prophecies, which tells of a traitor emerging amongst them, and his role is to find out who that is. Ava was also tasked with a heavy burden, knowing that the war is inevitable, she is instructed to avoid the conflict and instead gather a group of exceptional Keyblade wielders, regardless of their affiliation, and convince them to be part of another faction. This new crew, the Dandelions, was on a mission to travel to other worlds and ensure the survival of the light. Yes, Ava created the world's first war pacifists. Make light, not war. Eventually, after mounting fear and infighting amongst the foretellers, Gula finally snaps. He summons Kingdom Hearts to lure the Master of Masters back for answers, leading to an all-out scuffle for the Keyblade. The only way into Kingdom Hearts is to summon its door with the Keyblade, a weapon created when a heart of pure light intersects with a heart of pure darkness. Hundreds of warriors led by each foreteller fight over this legendary weapon in the Keyblade War. As a result, the Keyblade shatters into 20 pieces, 7 of light and 13 of darkness, and plunging the true Kingdom Hearts into darkness. But but all is not lost. The world is saved by the light that remains in the hearts of the people and children in the Dandelion faction. Their light draws fragments of the world back together, saving it from complete annihilation. Xehanort's plan is to start a brand new Keyblade War with warriors of light and darkness clashing so that he can make the Keyblade that gives him access to Kingdom Hearts. In order for Xehanort to recreate the war, he's attempting to create 13 vessels of himself to battle seven wielders of light, presumably our main characters. Sora, Riku, Kairi, Mickey, Ventus, Aqua, and Terra. But we never know what kind of wrench Tetsuya Nomura will throw into the mix. <sighs> you know, sometimes I think they just make the games by taking whatever's on a desk and scooping it into a blender and then putting the blender on and just waiting. You know what I mean? But where do the princesses of heart come into all of this? Ladies! The Princesses of Heart come into being when Disney decided they wanted to push for more princess merchandise after a heavy financial loss of the Keyblade War. Wait, what? In reality, when the Keyblade shattered, those seven fragments of light wound up inside the hearts of seven princesses. The princesses are maidens with hearts of pure light, devoid of any darkness. If you bring them together, you're able to summon the final keyhole to Kingdom Hearts. Xehanort needs the Princesses of Heart to open up Kingdom Hearts, and it's up to Sora and his friends to make up with the seven guardians of light to defend them. The Princesses of Heart are Aurora, Cinderella, Belle, Jasmine, Snow White, Alice, and Kairi. Where's our cartoon of Kairi, or like our movie of Kairi? Disney. It has to be anime style. It has to be anime style, Disney. Enough of the fun kid stuff. Let's talk about Organization 13. Just like the Big Brother house, Organization 13 is full of betrayal. I'm talking double 
triple, and quadruple crossings right here. Organization 13 is made up of 13 zippered nobodies led by Xemnas. Xemnas told them that they were nobodies, literally and figuratively. They believed they don't belong in the realm of light or even the realm of darkness, and that the personalities that they had were just leftovers from their memories of being human. Xemnas has them convinced that they'll always feel incomplete, unless they follow him, that is. They believe that Xemnas can open up Kingdom Hearts and restore their hearts. But, in fact, Xehanort is plotting to use the members of Organization 13 as empty vessels to fill up with his own essence and create his 13 Seekers of Darkness. The names of the Organization 13 members are strange and confusing, but they might be easier to remember if we divide them into groups. In the first group is Zigbar's team. He doesn't really trust Xemnas, but still wants the power that he's promising them. Together with Zaldin, Vexen, Lexius, and Zexion, they're the most invested in the fake plan of getting their hearts back. In the other camp are Axel and Syx, who actually want to overthrow the organization from within. To keep up appearances, Syx becomes Xemnas' right-hand man, while Axel takes care of the more shadowy parts of the coup. Unfortunately for Syx, you can't fly that close to the sun without getting burned. He and Axel slowly start drifting apart, and Syx starts becoming a little too chummy with Xemnas. Axel, in the meantime, is spending more time with Roxas, causing his heart to regrow and creating a rift between Syx and Axel. The last four, Demix, Luxord, Marluxia, and Larxene are the latest recruits. Marluxia and Larxene also decide to overthrow Organization 13, but they're pretty bad at the whole subterfuge game. Let's talk about Brig. By the time the events of Dream Drop Distance begin, Organization 13 is all but gone. Most have been defeated and changed back into their human forms. Young Xehanort retrieves Brig and Issa to be reverted to nobodies and become Xehanort's vessels. As it stands now, the known members of the real Organization 13 are Master Xehanort, Young Xehanort, Xemnas, Ansem Seeker of Darkness, Syx, and Zigbar. The other six are unknown hooded figures. Xehanort still needs one more to complete his roster, and it's anybody's guess who it could be. I wasn't calling Organization 13 a bunch of nobodies just to be mean. If you didn't know, a nobody is a type of enemy in the world of Kingdom Hearts. When someone becomes a Heartless, their remaining body becomes a nobody. Generally, the nobodies you fight are these silver fish looking things, but those with strong wills, like Sora and Ansem, and all the members of Organization 13, have nobodies that are able to retain their human form. Rule of thumb is, the more human looking a nobody is, the stronger the will of the person they came from was. Fun fact, the high ranking nobody enemies you fight in Kingdom Hearts are named after Final Fantasy job classes, like assassins, dancers, and berserkers. A heartless are those without hearts. Thanks, Squall. Renoa is a lucky lady, but he's not wrong. He's the best looking guy here. A heartless is indeed a being without a heart. What he fails to elaborate, however, is that the pure blood heartless are born from darkness within people's hearts. That's the theory. However, the main big bad, Xehanort, found a way to create these beings artificially. These Heartless are called Emblem Heartless, and you can tell by the Heartless emblems on their bodies. You can find them in most of the Kingdom Hearts games. Their main goal in life is to devour the hearts of others. Not like in a scary Silence of the Lambs way, but in a more symbolic embrace of darkness. The more soulless a Heartless, the bigger and darker it becomes, with the exception of Ansem, the Seeker of Darkness, and that's because he's willingly giving himself over. All right, so we got nobodies, we got Heartless, let's make this more complicated. What are Dream Eaters? Adorable little bouncy neon lights. Dream Eaters are the manifestations of darkness and light in the realm of sleep. They come in two forms, spirits and nightmares. It's pretty easy to confuse the two because they look the same, except for the color. I've tried to attack my own spirit friend on more than one occasion. Sorry, buddy. Thought you were a nightmare. Like the name states, these bouncy neon lights eat dreams. Spirits eat bad dreams, and nightmares eat good dreams. Dream eaters love to hang out in the realm of sleep. Heartless and nobodies are unable to enter that realm. And lastly, I'm talking about last section, and the last and least popular type of enemy in the Kingdom Hearts universe is the Unversed. Present in Birth by Sleep, the Unversed are a manifestation of emotion. They were created when Master Xehanort split Ventus in two and extracted Venetus from his darkness. You know, I think Square was just like, let's make a new enemy, and everyone was like, okay, and nobody thought about that at all. Unversed. Venetus was the testing phase for Xehanort's eventual creation of the Emblem Heartless. While both share the same genetic makeup of darkness, Venetus is plagued with those pesky emotions that keep us so unstable. The Unversed are extensions of Venetus himself, and by destroying them, he absorbs them and creates more Unversed. So there you have it. That's our Kingdom Hearts lore video. With this additional terabyte of knowledge, you'll be ready for Kingdom Hearts 3. If you want another refresher, we've got a Kingdom Hearts timeline in the works. If I was a nobody, what would my name be?
X Sydney. Sydney. Sydney X. Sydney X. I've been Sid. I'm Sydney X with the leaderboard. I've been your host. Thanks for watching.